Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk about the gut lung access and specifically how that's related to asthma and especially want to talk about how bifidobacterium impacts asthma. If you look at something like the gut and a lung access, you might wonder, well, is there a gut brain access? Uh, indeed there is. I've done a video on that in Alzheimer's. Uh, just for fun, if you just Google uh, some sort of disease state in the word microbiome, uh, you will get endless results. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about research articles, et cetera, not just news blurbs or some sort of blog. So uh, it's becoming apparent that uh, the microbiome is related to just about every possible disease state. Uh, so we're going to talk about the gut lung access and asthma today. And uh, just some statistics on asthma, it affects 26 million people, uh, $82 billion in costs. Uh, it's the number one reason that kids miss school. So uh, it makes a significant dent on lifestyle, on uh, medical costs, uh, deaths, 4,000 deaths per year, et cetera. So a very serious uh, disease can be very serious. So here's part of my asthma story. I didn't develop asthma until I was in my early 30s. Uh, it, it happened suddenly. I still don't know why. I went for a run one night. I came back and about a half an hour later, uh, my face is uh, swelling. My my uh, airway is, is narrowing and uh, it never happened before. So I went to the ER and was diagnosed with exercise-induced angioedema or exercise-induced asthma. I uh, had it ever since, uh, thankfully for me. Never life-threatening, you know, looking back, I probably wouldn't have needed to go to the ER, but it was my first experience with it. And had been on two low-dose um, steroids for all, all this time and, and albuterol. Occasionally, mostly I would take it prophylactically before I'd go for a run because I, I, I would have some wheezing but uh, all the time, but it affected me mostly during exercise. So. I would take that prophylactically to sort of open up my airways and uh, just have a little bit better run. So not life-threatening, uh, but interfering with some of my lifestyle. Uh, I would get in the last 15 years, probably um, get uh, bronchitis every year, which would end up in a, uh, a bacterial infection. Eventually would start viral, end up bacterial, end up on antibiotics once a year, every winter uh, without, without ceasing. So uh, those are some of the results. But let me uh, paint my story and how it relates specifically to bifidobacterium. Uh, after December of 2021, uh, or that's uh, before that August of 2021, uh, I started on five prebiotic fibers. This is just my first attempt to see if I can impact my gut. And by this time, I'd already taken out myself off all my, all my meds to see uh, what, what difference it might make. And then after my first gut test, I went from having essentially no bifido to uh, over 2%. So I was pleased with that. Added HMO and went up all the way to 8%. And I'm definitely seeing my asthma improving. I'm, I'm running now in the, in the summer months and telling my wife as we usually run together, definitely my asthma is improving. No question about it. I also added that summer nose breathing while I exercise. So um, I practice nose breathing. I, I tape my mouth at night. Um, I only breathe through my nose 100% of the time while, while I exercise. I can run up to up to five miles uh, only breathing through my nose. And uh, what is many, many benefits from that. But one of the things it does is increases nitric oxide, which is good for all sorts of things. Cardiovascularly, it's good for your gut. And interestingly, um, you, uh, bifidobacteria can actually increase levels of nitric oxide as well. So I'm convinced that was helping expand my lungs uh, and do some other things as well. And by this point, my, my asthma is gone. First time in almost 30 years, my asthma is gone. Only occasionally, uh, if I go for a run, I might just feel a little bit of chest tightness, but essentially it, it's gone. Um, and then this thing happened. Uh, subsequent tests, you know, for over a year, I've got about 8% of bifido doing pretty well. 
maybe it got greedy. I thought, can I, can I get some more bifido? So um, I started making this bifido yogurt, which is a, a, a specific kind of yogurt with just bifido cultures. And it takes a little more time, a little more involved uh, to do it. And I thought, okay, uh, I'm still on HMO and bifido really likes HMO. So this is going to skyrocket, but it plummeted. And uh, not sure why exactly. Uh, so I, I had, was taking HMO and added bifido. I know a guy who was taking bifido had similar bifido levels as, as I did and then added HMO and his bifido also crashed. Now he's able to get his back, I believe. Uh, so don't know the answer to that. We're, we're going to let that lie for now. <clears throat> but what happened is my asthma returned. No question about it. I started nosing, noticing uh, just regular wheezing throughout the day, then began to impact my exercise, etc. cetera. Um, so I put myself back on, uh, got rid of all the other prebiotic fibers, only taking HMO, four gram dose, which is essentially a double their daily dose, um, recommended dose, dosage. And I kid you not, within one week, my asthma is gone. And within a couple of days, uh, I, I said to my wife, my asthma is improving. I mean, I, I can feel it. Within a week, it was gone. So I was very happy with that. So of course, I'm thinking, putting this together and just making guesses, uh, when I do my next gut test, um, it's my bifido is going to skyrocket. That, that's just, that has to be the case. Uh, I'm convinced of that. Uh, but then as I already uh, showed you there briefly, what I ended up with was no bifido. It, it dropped even further. So I'm disappointed in that because uh, I want to have bifido, but I'm also wondering uh, what made, uh, what improved my asthma? What made the difference? It clearly wasn't bifido as it, as it I believe it was the main reason the first time. Um, and it wasn't the, re and it was the reason I believe why it, it, return, but it wasn't the reason why it improved the, the next time. So digging a little bit deeper into my results and saw the only thing notable to me is that my Violinella uh, skyrocketed. You can see when my Bifido crashed, uh, Violinella also crashed. I had a decent amount. And then on the four grams of HMO, it just skyrocketed. That, that's, that's a lot of Violinella. But the question then is, uh, I was asking myself, does Violinella consume HMO? And all my research that I could find at first, I was not finding uh, much at all that showed that Vilanella was consuming HMO. But here again, uh, at least uh, uh, correlation wise, there was a strong correlation between my taking HMO and my Vilanella uh, uh, skyrocketing like that. Then I found this research paper that came out this year, which states alpha diversity increased significantly in infants with GOS or galacto oligosaccharide and or 2FL, which is the main component of, of HMO and the only uh, type of HMO I was taking from layer origin. Uh, so the diversity increase as well as relative abundances of the genera Violinella and Acomancia just with 2FL alone and lactobacillus with GOS. Combinations of GOS and 2FL significantly stimulate Violinella, lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and streptococcus. But the point is that 2FL alone uh, can help increase Phylonella. Uh, you know, doesn't mean it will in you for sure, but uh, research showing, and I believe my results are showing that that is the case. And Phylonella doesn't get a lot of press, uh, a lot of discussion, uh, as far as I can tell in the microbiome field, but this PREDICT study from a few years ago, PREDICT1, 1100 particip participants, what they say is the world's largest in-depth nutritional research program. So just one study, but, but, uh, but uh, uh, a vigorous study. And they chose what they believed were the top 15 bacteria species, not in any particular order, that impacted a person's overall health. And it just so happens that, that three of the 15 are Violinella species. And Violinella dispar is my number one species in that genera. So um, that just shows you their opinion of Violinella. So now I want to talk about the research that demonstrates the link between bifidobacterium and asthma. And this study showed that B. infantis administration for four weeks improved asthma symptoms in correlation of dysfunctional Treg cells. And Treg cells are ones that act to suppress the immune response 
in patients with partly controlled asthma. So compared to the placebo group and the probiotic group, incredible increase there, 93% uh, percent, uh, uh, benefit there from just taking B. infantis for, for four weeks and no other prebiotic fibers, just B. infantis. Um, and that showed a significant impact. Another study, this is infant gut microbiome is enriched with bifidobacteria longum subspecies infantis in old order Mennonites, which are very similar to Amish with traditional farming lifestyle. And they're comparing now with uh, non-Mennonites living in Rochester, New York. And they demonstrated that B. infantis was more abundant and prevalent, detected in 70% of old order Mennonites, compared with 21% of Rochester infants. And then atopic or allergic diseases were reported in only 6% of the of, of old order Mennonites, but 35% of the Rochester children. So just demonstrating that whatever the Mennonites are doing, uh, old order Mennonites, similar to Amish, you know, they're, they're around a lot more animals, uh, dirt, farming, picking up uh, bacteria, et cetera. And uh, that's, uh, that's making a difference. And specifically, it's increasing the level, the level of B bifidobacterium infantis in their guts, uh, which they then correlate with much less asthma in those infants. This study shows breastfeeding enrichment of B. longum. Again, same subspecies infantis mitigates the effects of antibiotics on the microbiota and childhood asthma risk. So let me zoom, on, zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, you start with uh, infant antibiotic exposure within the first year, uh, but without breastfeeding. So they're not getting any HMO in the breast milk. There is a reduced or absent uh, B. infantis colonization in, in the gut, and then a three times increase in childhood asthma within the first five years. So a, a very, very strong correlation there. And now the opposite would be true when you have antibiotic exposure within the first year with breastfeeding, which means they are getting HMO uh, combined with supplementing with, uh, uh, um, no, there is no, sorry, there is no supplementation of of B. infantis, it just by itself increased uh, B. infantis. And then it was a protection from elevated asthma risk. Um, so that was again, just through breastfeeding alone. Now this uh, getting into Villanella links to asthma. This is interactions of airway. So this is bacteria in the lung and fungal communities uh, in clinically stable asthma. And this showed that Villanella were increased in healthy controls. Uh, and again, that's Phylonella in the lungs. Um, here is a study, uh, more than 300 families enrolled in the Canadian Health Infant Longitudinal Development Child Study uh, took part in this research. Scientists involved examined the fecal samples of the infants. They discovered that four bacteria, uh, Fecalobacterium, Lacnospira, Phylonella, and Rothia were present in lower levels among 22 children considered to be at high risk for asthma. So in other words, Vilanella were decreased in children with asthma symptoms. So um, it's not showing a huge increase necessarily. Well, it is, it's showing an increase in kids, children without asthma and a decrease in Vilanella with kids that do have asthma. So just sort of wrapping things up here, my two species that I believe made an impact on my asthma were bifidobacterium and Vilanella. There you see, and I'll zoom in on that. Um, uh, all of these were decreased bifidobacterium, acromantia, fecalobacterium, et cetera, in people that later developed asthma. And uh, I've demonstrated here two species, bifido and Vilanella, that I believe are strongly correlated with the elimination of my asthma symptoms. So I'm very thankful for that. And in my opinion, you make your own decision here. There is clearly a gut lung access and especially with bifidobacterium and I believe also with Vilanella. And I find that interesting and very helpful for my personal life. And uh, I appreciate you watching this video.